If you'd like a future where people aren't sentenced to death for blasphemy, join us live. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Islamic Calling Podcast. So today I'm back with Mr. Psycho David Wood. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? I think he made this video quite a while back. Uh, so basically this in this video he talks about how Islam allows blasphemy laws. There's an incident in Nigeria where a uh, a Sufi singer was sentenced to death for blasphemy. But later on that ruling was later revoked. But I'm gonna react to his video. Uh, anyway, because I feel like there's a lot of kind of like nonsense that he puts out. So yeah, let's take a look and let's see what he says. Ironically, in northern Nigeria today, if you say something offensive about Muhammad, a Sharia court will sentence you to death. The BBC reports. A musician in Nigeria's northern state of Kano has been sentenced to death by hanging for blaspheming against the prophet Muhammad. An upper Sharia court in the Hasawa fill-in hockey area of the state said Yahya Sharif Aminu, 22, was guilty of committing blasphemy for a song he circulated via WhatsApp in March. Mr. Sharif Aminu did not deny the charges. Judge Khalid Aliu Muhammad Khani said he could appeal against the verdict. States across Muslim-majority northern Nigeria use both secular law and Sharia law which does not apply to non-Muslims. Only one of the death sentences passed by Nigeria's Sharia courts has been carried out since they were reintroduced in 1999. By the way, I love how David was like, how dare these Muslims just you know, not allow their prophets to be mocked? How dare they? <laughs> you know, how dare they like, you know, not allow... By the way, you know, this Nigeria's Muslims, you know, uh, the ones who are sincere, will take issue with even if Jesus was mocked, okay? Even if Jesus was made fun of in like some kind of poetry or song, a sincere Muslim, Nigerian or otherwise, would take offense to that as well because he's our prophet as well. Why don't, why can't they like let uh, people make uh, mockumentaries about Jesus, about about the prophet, and why 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 don't they uh, make uh, let people make uh, movies where they depict Jesus, Jesus as gay, right? Why why? <laughs> What you find interesting is that this has nothing to do with Christianity. What these Nigerian Muslims are doing are completely aligned with Christianity. For example, uh, if you read uh, Leviticus 24, 10 to 16, it says, Now an Israeli uh, woman's son, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the people of Israel. And the Israelite uh, woman's son and a man of Israel fought in the camp. And the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name and cursed, uh, uh, the name meaning God. And then they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shelomith, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in custody, till uh, the will of the Lord should be clear to them. Then the uh, Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring out of the camp the one who cursed, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head. And let all the congregation stone him, and speak to the people of Israel, saying, Whoever curses God shall bear his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord sh shall surely be put to death. All the congregations shall stone him, the, the sojourner uh, as well as the native. When he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. Okay, so this is Moses saying this. We read about this in Leviticus 24, 10. Then, in another place, and now that's the Old Testament. I'm sure a lot of like, Christians, new, uh, the New Testament Christians, they will say that. Ah, oh, but that's... that's that's Old Testament, that's not New Testament. Okay, let's look at the New Testament. In Galatians 6-7 it says, Do not be deceived, God is not, not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. So, you tell me, like, your own Bible, your own Bible is saying that if someone mocks God, they should be stoned to death. And you're upset that Nigerians are applying this law. <laughs> David Wood is like, how dare these Muslims do exactly what the Bible says? <laughs> Miracle of reinterpretation! They also have blasphemy law. For example, I remember uh, during, uh, you know, during the height of like 9-11 tensions, there used to be a lot of like documentaries on YouTube uh, that talked about the 9-11 conspiracy theories. You know, there are conspiracy theories that talked about how 9-11 didn't happen and some of those conspiracy theories actually had some very compelling evidences 
uh, I, I think there was this one documentary that even had engineers that said that you know the tower the way it fell it didn't it doesn't make sense these are experts saying this right now if you search <laughs> 90 of the conspiracy theories on YouTube you find nothing like all of those documentaries have been completely removed like they're completely gone which is very bizarre and strange like they're all taken off like why <laughs> right I mean, if, if they believe in like absolute free speech, then wh wh where are these documentaries, right? Where are these people that are, you know, denying 9-11, uh, that denied 9-11, where are their books, right? <laughs> it's just, it's all gone. It's all gone. You, you search it on YouTube, it's not there. And then there's also like uh, a lot of conspiracy theories, uh, videos and documentaries that came out during, you know, the COVID, uh, the whole COVID situation. Those are also gone. <laughs> They're also gone. So yeah, like uh, the thing is that anytime they see that anything that they might think might put them at jeopardy, they're going to remove it. I mean, look at what happened with Undertale, right? So when people insult God, the one who created everything and one who keeps you alive, so according to them, you're allowed to mock him, but these man-made scumbags, these de degenerates, right, who are going around bombing people, right, stealing money from people, you know, surveilling uh, civilians, the scumbags you can't say anything bad about them right <laughs> you can't have uh, conspiracy theories that expose them right so this is the like kind of like the double standards the singer who is currently in detention had gone into hiding after he composed the song protesters had burnt down his family home and gathered outside the headquarters of the islamic police known as the hispa demanding action against him Critics said the song was blasphemous as it praised an imam from the Tijaniya Muslim Brotherhood to the extent it elevated him above the Prophet Muhammad. So, this wasn't a non-Muslim making fun of Muhammad. This was a Muslim singing a song that praised someone more than Muhammad. Praising someone more than Muhammad was enough to get this Nigerian Muslim a death sentence for blasphemy. Or lust I heard is that he was uh, released of the charges that were put against him so you know so maybe when he said that he didn't actually mean it like that so it's possible this whole thing it was just a misunderstanding however let's say for the sake of argument that you know he is actually guilty of this so how does that you know uh, how, why is he get punished for it so one of the reasons why blasphemy is usually punishable is because it is it, basically apostasy it's a form of apostasy so how is it apostasy? For example, in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu makes it very clear. He says, "Indeed, we have sent you as a witness and a bringer of good tidings and a warner, that you may believe in Allah and His Messenger and honor Him and respect the Prophet and exalt Allah morning and afternoon." Surah Al Fath 48, 8-9. So if someone says there is someone better than the Prophet, then they are disrespecting and dishonoring the Prophet and therefore rejecting this verse of the Quran. If someone is rejecting the Quran, then they are a clear disbeliever. Then he's clearly denying this ayah. He's clearly denying. Uh, what Allah SWT is saying here. So that's how he would no longer be a Muslim. I'm gonna read a quote uh, from a very famous scholar and I want you guys to uh, guess who it is, right? So uh, the quote says, if we compare murder and blasphemy as regards to the objects of these sins, it is clear that blasphemy, which is a sin committed directly against God, is more grave than murder, which is a sin against one's neighbor. So this person is saying that, this scholar is saying that if you commit blasphemy, that's actually worse than murder, right? Now, who do you think this guy is? I, I want you to guess. I'm gonna give you three seconds. No, it's not Ibn Taymiyyah, it's not any Muslim scholar. So who is it? That's right. It's none other than Mr. Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> One of the greatest Christian theologians of all time. This is Thomas Aquinas defending blasphemy law, right? So if, according to Thomas Aquinas, blasphemy is worse than murder. From this, we can get this following argument, which is premise one. Blasphemy is worse than murder. Premise two, murder is punished because it's bad. Conclusion, therefore, blasphemy also has to be punished because it's worse, okay? And yeah, I mean, if this is really the case that, you know, blasphemy is worse than murder and, it's, and murder is punished, then blasphemy also has to be punished, right? It logically follows. And if you're not going to punish that, and I'm talking to the Christians here, 
then you have to explain why you will punish murder, right? Because it doesn't, it's not consistent. If you're going to punish, because the thing is, why is it that when someone commits a crime against God, they're not punished, but when they commit a crime against a normal human being, then they're punished. Are you saying that the normal human beings have more right than God? No, of course not. So it, it's not consistent because a murderer could easily say that, uh, you know, I mean, you allow people to commit crime against God, you know, the ruler or the king, then why can't you allow us to commit crime against people, right? If it's okay for, for people to commit crimes against God, then why is it not okay for people to commit crime against you, the king or the government, right? It doesn't follow, right? So in order for this secular person to be logically consistent, if he's a Christian, then he has to punish blasphemy, okay? Otherwise, he's being completely inconsistent. But what he doesn't realize is that by saying that blasphemy law is bad, he's actually insulting Christianity. He's insulting Thomas Aquinas. He's insulting all the scholars, Christian scholars who advocated for blasphemy law. He's saying they're all stupid. <laughs> they don't know what, what they're talking about, but he knows what they're talking about. He knows better than Thomas Aquinas and all this other kind of like uh, author of the Bible. <laughs> He knows better than Moses, right? David Wood knows better than Moses. <coughs> this is the kind of like stupidity you see from Christian liberal kind of apologetics. So based on this, we can make this following argument, right? Premise one, blasphemy law is bad. Premise two, Christianity promotes blasphemy law. Conclusion, therefore Christianity is bad. If blasphemy law is bad and Christianity promotes blasphemy law, then Christianity is bad, right? It only logically follows. I mean, how can you have, uh, you know, how can you say that, uh, you know, blasphemy law is bad, but then not say that Christianity is also bad because Christianity promotes blasphemy, right? It logically follows. So yeah, basically David Wood is saying that Christianity is a bad religion. <laughs> In his attempt to kind of like criticize these Nigerians, he's actually uh, insulting his own religion. And this is like absolutely stupid, right? And this is what these people are promoting. You know, I remember a few uh, years ago, a movie came out where they completely mocked Jesus and showed Jesus as a gay man. This is absolutely disgusting. There was outrage. But where was uh, David Wood? Did he like criticize this? No, he's fine with this. Because it's completely fine. According to him, he's completely fine if you mock Jesus, you know, you mock, insult God. That's completely fine with him. Uh, you know, but if you like, you know, but if you like speak against this kind of like scoundrel who are mocking God, or punish them, uh, punish people who are mocking God, or insult God, then, then you're the bad guy. <laughs> if you're a Christian who uh, advocate that these people should be punished, then you're the bad guy, according to David. SubhanAllah, I mean like, this is like upside down morality, right? Because as a Muslim, I would never be okay with Jesus being mocked. And this is not right, I mean like, also, why would any Christian or any Muslim would want to live in an environment where their religion is being mocked? That doesn't make any sense. Like, I mean, seriously, you, I'm asking directly to the Christians. Will you be okay if, let's say, let's say you have a child, right? And your child goes to school, and every day you, your child is bullied, he's mocked. Then you go to the principal and you complain, "Hey, my child is being mocked. Okay, and he's hurting me. Please do something about this." Then the teacher is like. Yeah, I know that this is bad. We, of course, we believe that this thing that they're doing, you're bullying your kid verbally is bad. But, you know, we believe in free speech. You know, people have the right to say what they want, right? So we're not going to do anything about it, right? That's basically the liberal position. Uh, that's basically what liberal Christian apologetics like David Wood is telling you, which is that these atheist scumbags, they can insult your God, your religion, all they want, right? They can do whatever they want. And they know it's bad, but they're, they're not going to do anything about it. This is not the true teachings of the Bible or the Quran. Okay, this is not what, this is not, this is not loving Jesus. This is abuse. But the thing is that I know that I, crit I criticize other religions, so it might sound like hypocritical for me. But the only reason I do this is because other people are mocking my faith. So I have to say something. But the, the truth is, and this is the honest truth, I, I don't like doing it. Huh. Wallahi, I don't like doing this. If I, if there's a world where nobody mocked my religion, I wouldn't be doing this. But the only reason I do this is because they're mocking my religion. So I have to speak back. <coughs> but in a perfect world, no one would be mocking each other. <coughs> and that's exactly the kind of world as Muslim I want to see. Of course, there can be debate and discussion, right? You can have disagreements. 
and you can have a debate with within academic circle that's fine but to like some lay idiot to do just like outward like mock their other people's religion that's not right and and this is why blasphemy law is a good thing we do believe as a muslims that blasphemy law is good in society and there are research studies that show that when you <coughs> mock a particular religion uh, then they actually did this specific research where they showed the hashtag burn the quran when it was circulating the areas where this uh, this tweet was uh, circulating the most were areas where muslims got physically attacked the most so there's a strong correlation between hate speech against religion versus violence against uh, the followers of this religion okay so this actually can lead to uh, you know physical violence against the religious people and and just think about it this is basically dehumanizing religious people so why would anyone want this and the funny thing is that they do already have rulings like this right they don't allow things like you know, holocaust denial like they literally put people to jail if you deny the holocaust so why is it that you know certain th that people are not allowed to say certain things but when it comes to god you can do, just say whatever you want do whatever you want it's not consistent right so what these nigerians did out of passion out of compassion you may they did the right thing because they don't want their religion to be mocked and i don't think many christians would want that either because if you look at caf uh, report it's a report on charity on 2021 you will see that nigeria is one of the most charitable countries in the world uh, during the especially during the pandemic they give gave off the most amount of charity which is incredible because nigeria is not a rich country and yet they're very caring people they're very nice people they're very kind people right and yet when uh, nigerians do something good like this and people like david wood would never speak about it <clears throat> but he would only speak in bad terms about nigeria so yeah, when black people and black majority countries do something good and this uh, christian apologists they don't never talk about it and one of the reasons why nigeria was number two is because of religious preaching and islamic preaching right and i already made a video on this I'm so this is what david wood wants he wants christianity to be mocked he wants your religion to be mocked you want atheists to have free reign to like mock any religion and religious belief and i think a lot of christians who are open-minded will see through this and they will reject uh, this type of behavior from christians or so-called christians and also by the way if you guys like the video like share subscribe and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and yeah inshallah i'll see you guys next time uh, also if you like the content and want to support me then you know you can support me on patreon or on my youtube membership so yeah I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. Zazakallah khair. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.